John Belushi and Nicole Simpson never met each other, but they did have a connection relating to their deaths. It was said that on March 4th, 1982, John Belushi collapsed at the Rainbow Bar and Grill in West Hollywood, California. Right here. Take it down to Street View. It was said he was in the kitchen of the Rainbow when he collapsed. He didn't die, he just collapsed. Owner Mario Maglieri told those who were with Belushi to get him out of the Rainbow because Maglieri wanted to avoid any possible bad publicity connected to the Rainbow in case something bad happened to Belushi. Here's what the Rainbow looks like today, right next door to the Roxy. They took Belushi back to his room at the Chateau Marmont. Exit Street View. Which is right here. This building here. I'm going to take this down to Street View. There have been many documentaries covering the death of Belushi, and they show the main structure of the hotel, which is this right here. This leads people to believe he died in one of the rooms somewhere in this hotel. But he didn't die here in the main structure. He died in bungalow number three, which is right here, exit street view. Bungalow number three is this structure right here. At some point, a lady named Kathy Smith injected him with one last mixture of cocaine and heroin, which is known as a speedball. Then she left. He was discovered by Bill Wallace about 12 p.m. March 5th, 1982. Wallace was dropping off a typewriter and an audio cassette recorder Belushi had requested the day before. I'm going to go down to Street View. Bungalow number three is right over this wall behind these trees. And you can see these two gates right here. It's the gate on the right, right here, that Belushi was taken out of on the stretcher by the coroner. So here I am standing at the back gate, the two gates. It's the gate on the left, or the gate on the right here that they took him out of. And you can still see the same street light that was there at that time. In this photo taken March 5th, 1982, you can see Bungalow 3 right here. You can see the door right here that they brought Belushi out of. You can see the gate on the left here. And you can see the gate on the right that leads to Bungalow 3 being guarded by an LAPD officer. You can also see members of the press lining up right here in the middle of the street. All the media members were standing right through here. And the coroner's van was parked approximately right here. In this photo, you can see where they have Belushi on the stretcher that they just brought out of this door, and they are taking him to the coroner's vehicle. That's the door that Belushi was brought out of and wheeled down this way. Toward that gate. And right here at the gate, there's a three for bungalow number three. And right here at the back is the private parking for bungalow number three. It says it right there, private.
private parking, bungalow number three. This photo was taken just before Belushi was put into the coroner's van, and you can see the number of press reporters surrounding him right here. In this photo, you can see after they had loaded him up and were going to drive away with him, the number of press that were around the area. So as you can see, the news of his death spread rapidly, and the news media descended on the location in large numbers. Unfortunately, news of his death reached his family before the LAPD family notification process could contact his family members. An LAPD captain at that time named Keith Bushy was very bothered by this. He had this to say. Well, March of 82, I was the uh, patrol captain in Hollywood Division. And mid-morning, uh, my day watch commander, Lieutenant Randy Manzini, came in and said, Hey, boss. They just found John Belushi dead with a spike in his arm up at the Chateau Marmont. And my reaction was, who's John Belushi? Because I really didn't know who John Belushi was. By the end of the day, I sure knew who John Belushi was. But uh, my goodness, the media swarmed the place. But uh, that whole thing bothered me. In fact, it bothered me a great deal. Because before Belushi's body was even removed from the scene, uh, it was all over the airways. It was all over the national news, international news. And what a terrible way for someone to find out that they've lost a loved one. That bothered me. It bothered me a great deal. And, uh, you know, as we go down the path of life, we learn, learn different things and we make commitments to ourselves. And one of my commitments was to uh, reinforce my determination to do the very best job I possibly can to ensure a family is notified of a tragedy before they see it in the news media. Twelve years later, Captain Bushy was a commander. He had just arrived home from a trip to New Orleans when he received a call about 2.30 a.m. from one of his detectives telling him about a double homicide at 875 South Bundy Drive in Brentwood, Los Angeles. His detectives told him they didn't know who the man was, but they knew the woman was O.J. Simpson's ex-wife. Not wanting a repeat of what happened to the Belushi family, Commander Bushy instructed his detectives to inform O.J.'s family as soon as possible. Commander Bushy was responsible for sending the detectives to O.J.'s residence, and here's what he had to say. So Phillips uh, called me pursuant to an LAPD protocol that mandated that a staff officer be notified in certain instances, and one of those instances was a, uh, a, a crime of epic proportions or a crime that was likely to become a newsworthy event. So Phillips called me and said that he was standing at the scene on Bundy where there was a double homicide and they knew who one of the victims was. It was O.J. Simpson's wife, ex former wife. They didn't know who the man was. So they, uh, they told me what they had and I, to I told him at the time, I said, uh, Ron, I said, I don't want this to be another situation like Belushi. Make sure that you notify Simpson just as rapidly as you can. Because within a family, good news and bad news travels fast, and uh, I want him notified. He said, okay, boss, you got it. Maybe an hour and a half later, I got another phone call, but this time it was from uh, Lang. Lang and Van Adder were the two detectives out of Robbery Homicide Division, who, uh, once again, per LAPD protocol, rolled on that uh, crime and, to, and uh, because it was very horrific. When they got there, they saw that the horrific nature of the crime, plus the people involved, mandated that it's probably best handled by Robbery Homicide Division because they had more resources to handle something of that nature. So Van At or Lang called me, and, and he and I both uh, we, we were acquainted, and he said, hey, uh, Keith, we're going to go ahead and uh, take this case. I said, great, you've got it. And I said, by the way, has Simpson been notified yet? He said, no, not yet. And at that time, I said something, uh, and I remember very clearly what I said, because I have used this terminology before. I said, listen and listen carefully. This is not a hint. This is not a suggestion. I'm giving you a direct order. Even though you've taken the case and you're not within my chain of command, as a commander officer on the LAPD, I have the ability to issue this command. I want Simpson notified, and I want him notified right now. I do not want another situation like we had with Belushi, where the loved ones of these people learn about that crime over the news media. You're literally in a race against the media. I want him notified, notified now. He said, you got it, boss. That was it. Went back to sleep, and the next morning I got a call about 6 in the morning. 
I got a call from the commanding officer of West LA Detectives. His name was Spangler. And he said, hey, uh, boss, just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, looks like we've got a suspect in the O.J. Simpson, or in the uh, Nicole Simpson murders. I said, who's that? He said, well, uh, you, they went out to uh, Simpson's house on Rockingham, and it started to look like Simpson might be a suspect. History's got the rest of it. Commander Bushy was the last witness to take the stand at the O.J. Simpson trial. When asked why he didn't call Nicole's next of kin, he said he told them to contact O.J. because his two children were at the scene. The news coverage of Belushi's death inspired Captain Bushy to not have a repeat of how Belushi's loved ones found out. Keith D. Bushy, B-U-S-H-E-Y. Ms. Clark. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. Sending detectives to plant evidence was not the motive. Sir, please tell us what your job is. Commander, Los Angeles Police Department. The motive was to inform Nicole's family members of the death before they found out about it through the news outlets. Now, sir, had you had any previous experience with a high-profile case? Uh, yes. And what case was that? Oh, the Belushi uh, death. John Belushi? That's correct. And was there some particular experience with respect to that, sir, um, concerning the habit or practice of notification to the next of kin? Yes. Can you tell us what that was? Oh, well, I take it that we're going to relate this directly to... Exactly. Briefly. Very. The Belushi situation was very troubling for me personally uh, because the time frame the, from the time that his body was discovered until the media had that information was very, very short. And uh, I felt very bad at the number of his relatives who most certainly learned about his death through the media rather than through the family notification process. And then you gave an order? That's correct. And what was the order? I told him to find uh, O.J. Simpson just as soon as humanly possible and notify O.J. Simpson of his uh, ex-wife's death. And why was that an order? Certainly, there's always a notification. But the sooner we can make the notification to a principal, in this instance, Mr. Simpson, it stands to reason that that family notification will take place. And I wanted to do everything humanly possible to minimize the number of her relatives, nieces, nephews, uncles, aunts, that would hear it over the media the next morning. I wanted her relatives to learn of her death through the family and not through the media. And the sooner we could make that notification, the more likely that would occur. Why was it that you ordered them to contact Mr. Simpson as opposed to her family? Well, the ex-husband, but probably the big thing is we had his children there. And I, I was thinking a dual custody type situation, and it, it seemed to me to re, uh, seemed to reason that it would be less difficult to contact him. Not only that, but he's a prominent personality and somebody that seemed like somebody we could get a hold of right away. But once again, the children there uh, caused that to seemed like a very good and necessary thing to do. And first thing to do? Absolutely, very first thing. So there you have it. The John Belushi and Nicole Brown Simpson connection right here on Forrest Haggerty YouTube channel.